Good evening and welcome to another edition of Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Derbyologist, and joining me again this weekend, weekend is co-host Candace Hare. And Candace, we're going to go down to the Bayou and Louisiana Downs for the Super Derby card. And we're going to take a look at the pick three, the ninth, the tenth, and the eleventh races. And the ninth race is the Sunday Silence, which is always interesting because you don't see too many stakes races for two-year-olds on the turf. You don't, and... You know, races like this, you'll see a lot of horses switching surfaces, maybe looking to wake up a little bit on a new surface, or some who are looking for some added distance. So this is a really nice race. We have a big field, which is always good in these two-year-old races. Um, for me, there's a couple horses here I'd be looking at. One of them is Aztec Lion. Um, he's by American Lion, who I'm really looking at as to be a source of precocity, especially now that his wonderful is gone. But uh, this one's also out of a runway groom mare. So I think the switch to turf is going to be a positive switch for this horse. He's also been gelded. So a lot of angles going in this, the right direction for this horse. But he has always taken money. So this is one that I think is a very, very logical player in this spot that you have to use. But probably won't be worth actually making a win bet on the day. So instead for a horse that might be a little bit bigger price that you can play to win, um, I'm going to go with Royal Lion here. Um, I really liked this horse's most recent race. He finished second there, beaten by 10 legs, which was a lot. But the way the track was played, playing favored the winner there. And he also had a pretty rough start, but really was able to gather himself and keep going there, which I thought was nice in a young horse. He had won by over six legs before that when breaking his maiden. This is another one breeding-wise out of a Royal Academy mare should take to the turf. And the fact that he broke his maiden over a downgraded dirt surface, a wet surface, makes me think he might like the turf as well. A lot of times we see turf horses who can kind of freak over the slop. So I think Royal Lion is going to be the value in here and definitely worth a play. But I'm also going to use Aztec Lion in this spot. And the other one who I'd probably use in here too is Mach 5. Um, had a pretty nice debut, although it was a losing one, but this is a trainer who does typically, you know, have them really ready for that second start. Um, so Mach mm. 5 is also interesting, but my top choice in here is going to be Royal Lion. Yeah, in this race, there was a couple of horses that are still maidens, and they're entering them in this uh, stakes races, which this race has had both success on both the Philly side and the Colt side with some maidens winning it. I ended up with a horse on the outside in Tough Red Stick. And I, the reason why I kind of went with him is I like the fact that he's been bet down in all three of his races. Uh, he's raced at Indiana Downs in all three of his career races, but he was 5-1 to one in his first race, 6-5 uh, to five in his second, lost, but then won his last race by two lengths, uh, was bet down to 3-1, to one, was 7.5 on the turf, so he's got to win on the turf. He's by High Cotton, who's a son of Dixie Union. And this horse has kind of had a few runners, even though his stud fee is only $5,000, He's had a few runners that uh, have kind of outran their pedigrees, and Concerto on the mare's side, uh, mare side kind of adds a little bit of stamina and a little bit of turf. Uh, the connections are all Indiana Downs and Louisiana, and the ownership is kind of uh, TriStar Racing, which they do well. Um, and I just think some of those Indiana races are kind of tougher than they appear. Yes. They've got a nice purse level, and they've got some Kentucky-based trainers, and so I think... Uh, that Indiana Downs doesn't scare me off at all. I think he may have a little bit of a class edge than a few of these horses. Yeah, I agree with the Indiana Downs angle. I do think we're seeing some of the horses who used to go to Churchill or used to go to Arlington showing up now there in Indiana. So I agree that the races are better than we're used to them being. Kind of an interesting race. The 10th race is the unbridled race. Now this is for older horses, and there's a lot of turf horses here that seem to have good form, and then String King, he just continues to kind of dominate some of those Louisiana bred races. He does seem to be in control of that division. Um, this race, at least pace-wise, I don't see a ton. Um, I think Warren's Rebel post-aggregate, they could well duel on the lead, but aside from them, there isn't a whole lot of speed in this sort of a race. Um, for me, I landed on the outside horse in here, Wells Gold. Um, this is a horse who runs locally, did lose to String King last time out. But I do think that in this sort of a spot, could might just kind of trip out here, run in behind the, the two dueling leaders, 
He's run figures that are good enough to beat String King. He just hasn't happened to do it yet. But I don't think he's as far back. He, I don't think he's as far behind String King as the betting will make it out to be. So I'm going to take him as the potential value, you know, in a race where I think he can reverse the form. Yeah, I'm going to go with String King. It just seems like some of these older Louisiana bred races, um, you get horses that kind of really can dominate and they can win 50% of their races. And this guy's approaching a million dollars in earnings. He is six for 14 with four seconds on the Louisiana Downs turf. Uh, 17 for 37 lifetime. He's won three out of four and four out of five. And like you mentioned, he beat Wells Gold by four links the last time. Uh, he can seems to handle smaller fields and fuller fields, and he just seems to be in form right now. And this is a type of horse that I just find hard to pick against. Um, but like you say, sometimes the trip doesn't uh, work out in his favor, but I think he's going to make his presence felt, and he just seems to be in really good form right now. Yeah, he does. I know in that last race when he won over Wells Gold, he, he hit the lead pretty early there. So I don't know. I'm not sure he'd get, he can get away with that same sort of a trip in this spot, but... Yeah, he's definitely in form and does make him hard to beat. And he's beaten some, you know, not even just Louisiana horses we talk about, but he has beaten some nice ones. He beat Gentleman's Kitten. He beat Highball, who a lot of people have liked for quite some time as well. Um, so, you know, this is a horse who it's deceiving even to just say he's leading this division because he has beaten some horses who are better than that. That race leads us into the Super Derby. This year it's a $400,000 purse. And even though it's an open stakes race, I notice there's quite a few Louisiana breads in this field. There are. And for me, you know, I'm going to end up picking one of these local horses here in the picket factor. For me, this is a two horse race. I think it's really between him and between the horse shipping in from Emerald Downs, Prime Engine. Um, I opted to go with a local horse. I'm, he's won three races in a row, and he beat Allied Air Raid and Mobile Bay. Who both come back in the spot, um, you know, price-wise, he's not going to be anything. But he's a horse I would just single. I think I think this race, you know, unless you come up with something creative. But if you like, you know, one of the two or three favorites, it's you just have to take a stand and single one of them, and that's what I would do in this race. Um, yeah, he's only lost once, and it was third. So, you know, a horse who seems to love the racing down here. Let me see in the downs and. Like I said, has form over two of the two of the probably other leading contenders in this race. So, you have to pick against the picket factor, and that's the way I'm going to go. Now, in this race, it looks like you're just kind of holding off on the form, but there is five horses from that prelude. And watching the replay, I couldn't really make a, a reason for some of the other horses to change that form. Did you see anything that was subtle, maybe, that um, maybe somebody that was fifth could maybe really finish second? Or is it really the one, two, three were just better than the other two? Um, you know, I, I, for the most part, I thought they were better. Obviously, after the top two was a big drop-off to everybody else. So that's where it kind of gets tough to start to reverse, you know, five lengths, six lengths back. Um, you know, maybe the only thing I would say is that in that race, uh, Fusaichi Flame did duel out front. Um, had, with Lucky Stranger, who he ended up beating. So, you know, there isn't, I don't see a lot of, I, think, I see a lot of horses here who like to go forward, but I don't really see a lot of, you know, fast speed. So maybe if Fusaichi Flame could, you know, either settle a little bit better or be left alone a little bit, could, I don't think, he, I don't think he could win, but at a price, could certainly finish, you know, second or third for your Trifactus or Exactus. So, that would be the only one, but yeah, we need a little bit of help out front. Well, I kind of got it down to the top three contenders and maybe the morning line as well. I, I've got it down to Prime Engine, the Picket Factor, and Allied Air Raid. I ended up going with the pride of the Pacific Northwest here, Prime Engine, uh, the big victory last time out at Emerald Derby. He won that race by six lengths, which was kind of interesting because two races back in the Seattle Slough Handicap, he lost to that better be gone. And then he really had his measure in that Emerald Derby. And I thought that was significant in that he really reversed that form. In three weeks, he went from losing by three quarters of a length to winning by six. Yeah. 
So to me, that means there might be a sign of improvement there. Um, and then he came back with two nice workouts. In fact, uh, five furlongs and 58. Now, granted, Emerald Downs can get pretty fast when it's dry for a few days. But that seven furlongs and 123, again, to me, seems like another factor that he just really seems to be upticking. And if you look at his last three speed figures, it's 70 on the buyer scale on DRF. It's 70, then 82, then 83. And then maybe, you know, maybe he's capable of punching in an 84, 85. So I'm going to go with him with a slight upset over Allied Air Raid and the picket, factor, uh, picket fence. But I guess... You know, he is shipping tracks, but he does get the inside post, and he has had races where he's capable of taking the lead if maybe the fractions get a little bit too slow. Or I think some of the other horses would prefer to track. I think Prime Engine could be on the engine if, if they want it from the rail. Yeah, I mean, I think you can. Like I said, for the, for, as far as the win goes, to me, it, it is a two-horse race between both of our choices. Um, you know, I think this is a race where you, you're going to want to just either single or key someone on top and then hope you can get some prices underneath here. You know, I think of the likely favorites, the one that I would be against is Allied Air Raid, purely because he just loses too much for my liking. Like, he always takes money, and he doesn't win very often, and when he does win, it's not exactly an easy victory, if you know what I mean. So, of the, of the, short, the likely short prices... He would be the one that I'd be most against. Um, as I spoke of before, Fusa H.E. Flame would be one who maybe I would throw in at the bottom end of the trifectas at what's going to be a, probably a pretty big price. Um, things I didn't mention about him, he also gets blinkers on in this spot. And he has run against a lot tougher than these. He ran, you know, in the Louisiana Derby, was fifth there. Um, if you remember, they went very fast in that race, so Stanford and the like. You know, so... You know, for him, that this, you know, obviously this is a dropping class from races like that. So, you know, was in with them, was in with Bent on Bourbon and Private Prospects. So, you know, having had dueled last time out, I'm a little bit more willing to forgive his finish than some of the others. Again, not a win threat, but I do expect him to be a, a very large prize and could maybe get third. Um, the other one who I think has a chance of hitting the board in this race is Chuck Apology. Um, this is a horse who won by quite a bit last time out over at Evangeline Downs. A horse who just seems to be, you know, kind of improving and on the upswing. And, you know, a lot of times he's more lightly raised horses, which, we, you know, we tend to talk about during Kentucky Derby season. But a lot of these lightly raised horses, you know, they're more capable of making that speed figures jump. And a lot of times you'll, you know, you'll see a big jump and then they kind of stay there. They don't you know, bounce, as we talked about with the older horses. So, check apologies, you know, taking money every time he's ran, but I think this will be the one race where he'll actually be a bettable price in here. So, he'd be one I'd want to include underneath as well, because, you know, he does seem to be very consistent, seems to be improving a bit. And I like horses like that that always take a lot of money, and then you get them in a spot where, you know, they are. They're going to be a, a pretty nice price, which I think he's going to be here. You know, the one horse who I think from that prelude who could benefit with Prime Engine in there is Four Leaf Chief, because his best race back on March 28th at the fairgrounds, he closed pretty stoutly in that race. He's definitely a big closer, and maybe just the nine furlongs, and if you get a couple of horses up on the pace, uh, he needs, you know, he can't win, he can't close or win with a 113, but if they somehow go 112 and change, uh, I think his run looks a little bit better on paper, or on, on a track than on paper. Perhaps. I mean, he has one for me that I do wonder if he is just better over a wet surface. Two of his more recent, you know, good finishes were close seconds. Both came over wet fast surfaces at Evangeline Downs. So, um, you know, I, I wonder if maybe that is what has, you know, he's benefited over thus far and maybe he can't really replicate that form over a dry track. Um, I'd say the same for Mobile Bay. Broke his maiden over a muddy surface and then won again over a wet, fast surface. So, again, those are two I'd be a little wary of just because I you know we see this sometimes with these younger lightly raced horses. They'll get into these stakes races and stuff off of wins, you know, over the slop or over the mud, and they just can't replicate that form over a dry track. 
So how do you approach this pick three here? Do you just assume that uh, taking some of those favorites and just try to hit it multiple times and, and take the lower payoff? Or do you think there's a race where you could try to go a little bit deeper and then just go two and two at the end or two and maybe key your, you're just going to take the picket factor and just key them? I'm definitely going to key the picket factor in that race. Um, in the race before that, I'm, I'm going to try to go against drinking and use a few of them. Use uh, Wells Gold, Unbridled Giant, uh, Potomac River in there. So maybe go four deep or so in that race. And then in the ninth race, I'm, I'm glad that one is first because you can have a, you know, a chance to kind of see how the betting is laying out. A lot of times that's a sign in these two-year-old races. And for me, that's going to dictate a little. That's, you know, that race is one of the few races. I think, you know, a lot of times you look at races and you have kind of an idea of how the, how the tow board is going to shake out. But that two-year-old race, I really don't have an idea. You know, to me, a horse like Aztec Lion, I think would be a very logical, should be favorite. But you never know with you know how these Uncle Moles are going. If maybe Uncle Brenny will be the favorite, it has went off a two to one last time. So that's a race that I'm gonna have to weigh out how the market is a little bit. And if I'm seeing that you know either Aztec Lion or Royal Lion or Mach Five is taking a lot more money than I thought, then maybe I'll have to alter a little bit. But best case scenario, I'd want to use the three of them. What's it's interesting on the, these days when some of these cards get fed in the afternoon to the simulcast market is a majority of the money is simulcast money and you really you know then it you know it's a lot of people just really handicapping it out and you know i think the people that are actually there can see those horses for that ninth race um, know a little bit you know the quality of the picket factor and allied air raid they may have a little bit of an advantage because the cold uh, uh, hearted figure makers and stuff like that, they're just going to come in there and they're just going to punch the the betting numbers. But I, I do think sometimes whenever you can beat a favorite or two in a sequence like this, sometimes that's where the, the top board gets a little bit tilted because, you know, a couple of five to ones can, can really seem to increase that payoff. Yeah, and I think you have to look at it as who, you know, which of the favorites is likely to take the most money. And I think that you know, that's probably going to be in that 10th race, um, being String King. I think he could very well be the heaviest favorite on the day. So for me, that's the one that I want to play against then because you don't need as much to have. If you can beat him, you don't need as much to happen in order to get a nicer payoff. Whereas, you know, in that 11th race, if you have three horses that are all going to be, you know, very close priced to each other, well, then beating the favorite might not nearly help you as much. Um, you know, also on these days where you have these local, you know, these big meetings at a small track, you know, don't ignore the local horses. And I think, like you say, a lot of the money will be simulcast money. I think a lot of times people bet against the local horses because they just think class-wise they are up to par. But, you know, for them, this is their big day, and a lot of them are probably very well meant in this sort of spot. Well, last week we were at Kentucky Downs. This week we're at uh, Louisiana. And then next week we're going to go to the city of brotherly love. We've got the uh, Pennsylvania Derby and the Baron Stakes and, Mr. Z. and yep, and Coalition. So we'll take a look at those races as we get into mid-September. And then on the 26th, we'll come back for a big day at Belmont Park and Santa Anita. There's uh, quite a few stakes races between those two tracks on the 26th. And then the third is another big day at Belmont, including the Jockey Club Gold Cup. So by the end of October 3rd, we should pretty much know most of the fields for the Breeders' Cup. And then we start diving in and taking some more in-depth looks at some of those races as we get closer. That's going to do it for another edition of Down to the Wire.